on a mild, wet winter's night, the fire salamanders emerge from their hiding places underneath piles of mossy logs. Sometimes they'll share a log pile with other amphibians, such as common frogs. This fire salamander is a female. Last autumn she mated and now she's looking for a suitable place to give birth. The scientific name for this subspecies of fire salamander is Salamandra salamandra salamandra. This is what is known as the nominate subspecies. This means that the species name is repeated again for the subspecies. The ancestors of these animals came from Slovenia. She's found a suitable place, a small pool where she can deposit the larvae that she carries within her body. Fire salamanders are not good swimmers, so she won't enter the water completely, she just lowers her back end in. This is an artificial pool where this captive bred group live in an unheated outdoor greenhouse. She gives birth to a tiny larva. Each night she repeats the process, depositing one or two larvae each time. Do you see the little larva hiding there just under the base of its mum's tail? Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's hiding underneath her. A female fire salamander may give birth to up to 50 larvae in a season, but this first time mum has a modest six healthy larvae. Fire salamander larvae can be aggressive to each other or even cannibalistic if there is a difference in size. So because we only have a small number here, they're kept separate from each other in small tubs. The tubs have small holes in the side and are placed into one larger tub that contains water. In this way, the animals can share water and the larger volume means that it's less likely to become polluted with uneaten food and waste from the animals. A small amount of pond weed in each tub also helps to keep the water clean, removing nitrates and other pollutants and also adding oxygen. We also do occasional partial water changes with dechlorinated water. Food consists of live daphnia, blood worms, mosquito larvae, chopped earthworms, and as we see here, white worm. They're given fresh food every day. They will also take defrosted blood worm and other non-living prey items, but care must be taken not to overfeed these as uneaten dead food will pollute the water. With ample feeding, they will soon grow in size. Here they are given a generous feeding of live bloodworm. As the larvae approach metamorphosis, their colour will begin to change, as will their head shape, and their gills will reduce in size. 
They are now moved to a setup that allows them to leave the water when they are ready. And as they are all of a similar size, the main threat of cannibalization or aggression has now passed, so they are allowed to live together. Here we use a clump of moss as a land area. And even before the gills have completely vanished, the young salamanders begin to use the land. They are only in this setup for a couple of days because once they've all left the water, their setup is changed again. They're still kept very wet for a few days while their residual gills are absorbed, but they no longer have access to open water. Young salamanders can easily drown in water. All they need is wet tissue and some moss to hide in. After a few more days the tissue is dried out and they're also given some dry leaves to hide in. The housing requirements from now on are essentially the same as for adult salamanders, just on a smaller scale. And it's important to give them a choice of damp and dry areas to hide, as well as a shallow bowl of fresh water. There is lots of variation within the fire salamander family. These are North African fire salamanders. Salamandra algera tingitana. And this is Salamandra salamandra terrestris from Germany. Some can be red or orange instead of yellow. They may have spots, stripes, squiggles or other patterns, such as these Salamandra salamandra galicia from Portugal. The fire salamanders are a fascinating family to keep and breed and at UK Crested Newts we are currently working on building our fire salamander collection. So please ensure you subscribe to the channel for more updates and share this video with anyone who may find it interesting. Until next time, thanks for watching.